Hey, welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. Today we're gonna make life a little bit easier. All right. If you're like me and you are frantically tearing apart your engine trying to find ways to make it faster or more fun or just learn about it, then you've probably run into the scenario that I have where if, well, I guess it's only on a YJ, that's what this is all about. So I guess if you have a YJ, which would be the square headlights, if you have one of these with the four cylinder, you know that to do anything with your intake manifold, you have to first take off your power steering pump. Uh. And the power steering pump, is also your tensioner. So your power steering pump has a little, uh oh, that's gross. But it has a little bolt down here and you use that to tension your belt. And the bolt is kind of low and awkward and it's just no fun to get to. When our friends over at Jeep started developing the TJ, they kept the same 2.5 liter four cylinder, but they changed a few things on it mostly the computer, the connectors, and the like the air box, right? But one thing that they changed that is kind of subtle yet just monumentally awesome for a guy who holds a wrench is they changed the intake manifold right here. On this YJ intake manifold, you can see fuel dripping out of it. Also, you can see that the geometry here is different. And what they did is the YJ had a large aluminum bracket that, that went right here. And that held on the power steering pump. And that was all fine and good. But like I said, the power steering pump was a uh, tensioner as well. And it wasn't the most useful one. And it, it really didn't do that great of a job of loosening when it came time to work on your Jeep. So what they did over in the engineering labs at jeep is they developed a new power steering pump one that and this is important has holes in it so you can actually fit your socket through it to take the power steering pump off it's fantastic and then they gave us a stamped steel bracket rather than the cast aluminum one and the stamped steel bracket has an extra idler pulley that is now the tensioner and this is going to sit at the top of the engine and you can turn this bolt at the top of the engine. You could even throw a drill on there or something to really loosen it quickly. It is so much simpler. Also, because they did this, you can take off your intake manifold without taking off your belt. And that is huge if you're modifying things or if you're putting a header on or, or what have you. So today we're gonna talk about taking your YJ intake manifold and swapping it for a TJ intake manifold to save you just a little bit of time in the future. To start this off, you're gonna want to remove your intake manifold from your Jeep. If you don't know how to do this, I have a video for this and you can look down in the description for a link to it. I'm gonna post somewhere on the screen and picture the thumbnail so you kind of know what you're looking for. Tearing one of these down is fairly simple. There's not a lot to them. You've got your vacuum lines up here and you have your fuel rail up here. Right now I've got a vacuum line. This is your fuel regulator. I'm just going to disconnect that guy real quick. And we're going to tackle the fuel rail. Now be warned, the fuel rail probably has fuel in it and it's probably going to drip on me. And normally I would say we should empty it out, but we'll, we'll see what happens. This fuel rail has these little nuts on it. These nuts hold down all kinds of things like over here, they're going to hold down your, your throttle cable. And over here, it's going to hold, I don't know, I think it just like connects a few things. It's got a little connector to keep your wires all organized. So those come off first. Those are 10 millimeter nuts. The bolts that they connect to. Our half inch or 13 millimeters, if you prefer. And a deep well socket goes a long ways, my bad. But they're not in very tight. So 
So these are the 13 or half inch millimeter bolts I was talking about. You can tell that they are a little odd. You're not gonna find those at your hardware store, so don't lose these. Okay, as for your fuel rail, once you've taken those bolts out, it is loose, um, but that doesn't mean it's loose. Your fuel injectors are kind of just pressed in there. They have a rubber seal. And if it's been a long time since you've pulled them out, there's a strong chance that that rubber seal is very fused to the aluminum. You're just going to really need to be patient and pull on it from multiple directions. It does take a little bit of muscle, uh, but you'll figure it out. In my case, the rails separating from the fuel injectors more readily than the fuel injectors from the manifold. And that's okay. You can just take your clips off and you can pull the rail off of the injectors and do them one by one. That is perfectly acceptable and might even be easier to do. And we've already got gasoline going everywhere. Gasoline is toxic to human beings. So as you see, I'm not wearing gloves. That's probably not the best practice. I'm going to be washing my hands in just a moment. Uh, you, you really don't want to be in this stuff for very long. And yeah, that's too much. I need to put on gloves. That can make you very sick. Okay, of course I'm out of nitrile gloves for this video, so these with the rubber fingers is going to be good enough, unfortunately. There we go. All right, I recommend having a bucket ready to put this in, as I don't. There we go. Let this sit down and think about what it's doing. Now you can pull your injectors out. You can twist them a little bit. I've spilled gas all over them. It's lubricating everything nicely. That's not well thought out, can you tell? Very gentle. You don't want to break the rubber seal or leave it in. See if you aren't careful, it'll leave the rubber seal in and you're gonna have to fish it out with a pick. Not the end of the world, but very well may happen. This is gonna be a long video. This is a little plastic ring. Goes on the front of the injector. I've had comments on previous videos asking if the ring is a cap that needs to come off and it is not. It is part of the injector. It's determining your, your clearance. It's helping seat into these, uh, these machine holes. You do want it. It's not a bad thing. I've heard people go without them and that's, they're fine, but they gave you this to help you line things up and have a nice seal. So use it. it that's what it's there for. Don't take those off. Okay, now that we've completely soaked our table in gasoline, we're going to tackle These vacuum hoses. Yours might not be laid out the same way, but I'll tell you how mine's laid out just in case yours is and you want to remember. I have this goes to my crankcase vent, this red one here, bottom left. Top left is this guy goes to the brake booster. Uh, I have a T intersection down here. You probably don't. Yours is probably somewhere over here. But this one goes to that fuel regulator. The other one goes to the carbon catch can and the charcoal canister. And then this top right goes to my map sensor. Now that you've got all of your vacuum lines reinstalled, you're also going to want to pay attention up here. You should have another vacuum line, I think here. This probably goes to your transfer case. I don't have that. There's a, a video kind of explaining that I don't have it, but I don't really talk about how, how I did it. It's a very common modification. I removed the vacuum line from the transfer case that actuates the front axle disconnect. So you can look that up on Google. It's definitely worth doing in these YJs. And then also here was my air inlet temperature sensor. Yours is probably here. If it is, you should probably move it. I've got another video about that. Moving it to the air box, I found that my power is a lot more reliable uh, when I am doing that. So two other videos for you to watch. That's why I have plugs in here. But now you got your vacuum lines all squared away. You can put your uh, fuel rail back on. While you've got everything out, 
it's always good practice to just clean stuff up a little bit, get some of the dirt and grime off there, make sure there's no dirt on those rubber seals because those are seals and seals keep gas from pouring everywhere, which would affect your gas mileage significantly. Come on. This part here, you're supposed to lube these up with Vaseline. I'm not doing that. That is a problem. Yep, I'm gonna end up ripping these. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Okay, wow. We actually didn't come back to this. This is exactly why you should not edit a video three years after filming it. So here is footage from four years ago when I replaced the injectors with four hole injectors, you can go watch that. And I'm displaying proper use of the Vaseline on the O-ring of the injector. Also, we totally skipped the installation of the intake manifold. So here's another video from four years ago in reverse from when I showed you how to remove the intake manifold. Yep, it's not going to be great, but this is where we're at. And now you should be all caught up. This is the part where stuff gets to be a little bit more interesting. So you put your intake manifold back on the same way it came off, connected all your hoses, your injector wires, all that, vacuum and whatnot. And it's time to put on this tensioner bracket thing. We've got these three holes up there at the top. Those are going to your power steering pump. And these two down here are going to connect to your water pump with those two bolts. And this guy down here, believe it or not, is going down there, which is your motor mount. Yeah. So we got to take that off and these two guys off and mount this dude in there. To do that, we're going to use this, which is 9 16 And so these should already be out. That guy down there, you're going to have to take out. Unless you're doing this on a TJ, which case you already did this. But since we're modifying my YJ, we got to take that out for the first time. This is the part where you might think I'm a little bit crazy and that I'm spending way too much effort to do something that I think might make my life easier in the long run. See up there? There is your tensioner bracket. Here's your engine mount. And it actually goes behind the engine mount between the block and the mount. So I had to jack up the engine. Make sure you put some wood between these two guys here. Jack up the engine, loosen the mount, stick that guy behind there, and then shove washers that are the same thickness, roughly, under here, so that way she all matches up. Oh boy, this better be worth it. Now, if you have a TJ, this is, you know, normal, and uh, I believe it's the same configuration, but you just got to loosen that one and, you know, maybe jack it up a little bit, or I think you might be able to even shake it out of there pretty good or pry it out. Mounts are installed. Now you got your power steering pump here, and he actually gets wedged between this black mount and the aluminum here. So the black is steel, aluminum is your intake manifold. And so you just kind of pull on the steel one and deflect it until these all fit in here real nice. Now you got these real long bolts and these actually go through the power steering pump into the manifold. That's how you'll know if you're all lined up or not, is they either will or will not screw in. Like so. Oh yeah, much better. So this looks all fine and good, except what's this right here? This little piece of casting. Oh no, it's hitting the belt. They must have removed that. 
when they went to the TJ. So I'm going to cut it. But it looks like at one point something was threaded into here. Maybe like a pickup for crank position and they moved it later. I don't know what this was for. If you know what this is for, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm just missing some information here in my brain. But yeah, this that's not good. Shoot. Don't judge me. It's working. A couple thousand metal shavings and a nice finish with the Dremel later. It's a lot shorter and it's a lot smoother than it was a minute ago. Yeah, that's much better. Look at that clearance. Not touching anymore. That'll work. Was it worth all the effort? Yeah, I actually totally love it. So go do it. Like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.